I do. Yes. I do. Is that okay? No, I have. To you. To you. That's yeah. you. To you. It's fine. I like you like that. Yeah. It, 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 it helps you. Keeps me level. It helps me. Yeah. Okay. Amen. It's soothing. It's nap time. <laughs> Amen. So welcome. Pillows are in that room. Welcome to the gathering of the Hidden Valley here in the city of Fontana. We pray that you had a blessed uh, Christmas, uh, a blessed New Year's, and we just want to welcome everybody in this morning. Uh, just a quick little follow up. We are here at the King of Kings here on Sierra and Foothill, just because of the holidays that were taking place at the Senior Center. Uh, it was closed for two weeks, but last week for Christmas Day, we headed out to Corona, which was a blessing. Uh, it was an amazing day that day. We are able to do communion. Uh, and then today, here for New Year's Day, we're here at the King of Kings. Uh, we'll be back in the facility next Sunday at the Senior Center at normal times. So we just want to welcome everybody in and say Happy New Year's and may the Lord bless you throughout the remainder of this year and the years to come. Amen. Amen. But uh, I wanted to start out this morning, and it's coming to me now, that it is the new year yeah. here on earth. Yeah. <laughs> is this making sense? It's, it's the new year here on earth. And there's many people that may have resolutions for new year. But in the kingdom of God, there's actually no time. So here on the earth, there's many people that come into the new year and want to do resolutions. Amen. Is that, am I saying that right? Yes. New Year's resolutions, right? Yes. So the common New Year's resolutions are these. Lose weight for Please sure. Lose weight. Yeah. We'll get there, brother. <laughs> Some are commitments to quit smoking. <laughs> Some are commitments to stop drinking. Some are to manage money wisely. And some are to even spend more time with family. By the far, the most common New Year's resolution is to lose weight. <laughs> is to lose weight. Amen. Amen? Yeah. And we'll start out like this. Go ahead and turn your Bibles this morning to 1 Timothy 4.8. I'm just going to kind of flow with the way the Lord's leading me right now. The most common resolution is to lose weight out there in the world. I guess so. I guess so. Brother Cuba. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. And the reason I'm starting out with it in this manner is because we're in a new year. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't want to say that I have a resolution in place, but I have an idea of where I want to be. And for me, it's to be deeper with the Lord, mm -hmm. to have a deeper revelation and understanding of who he is and his ways. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what we're going to talk about today. So the title of today's message is to teach and counsel mm -hmm. and counsel mm -hmm. and teach. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And we've been going somewhere in the book of Colossians. But for some reason, it's the first of the year. It's 2023. God has been graceful and merciful to us that we still have air in our lungs and that we're able to come together as the body, worship, pray, and expose a little bit of the things that we've been going through, right? So that God can comfort us and give us joy to move forward. Amen. Got a word from the Lord and different testimonies and different scriptures came forth this morning after worship, which is amazing. But in 1 Timothy 4, 8, it says this. For bod bodily exercise profits a little. Yeah. That's out of the New yeah. King James Version. Yeah. I'm going to break somebody's bubble this morning. For bodily exercise profits a little. <laughs> In the New Living, it says physical training is good, right? But training for godliness is much better. Yeah. But godliness is profitable for all things. Promising benefits in this life and the life to come. In the New Kings, it says, having promises of the life that is now and that which is to come. So my encouragement is for you, everybody that wants to lose all that weight, whether it's five pounds, 
10 pounds, 20 pounds, maybe it's 50 pounds, yes. maybe you want to tone up and pick up some weights, you know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, the scriptures yes. teach us those things profit little, Indeed. but they're good for you. They're really good for you, but it basically profits nothing for you. And the reason I say that, because it says godliness is much more better. So the, the message today is to teach and counsel. Because at the end of the day, to become more godliness in God, in the character of who he is, is better than be fit and looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. You could be fit, muscled out, heavy weighted out, whatever you look like, and just bulk with muscle. But I see them guys. Them guys can barely move. And it's no offense to you that are buff like that. I just don't get it. And for the new year, I don't plan on getting buff like that. My goal is to become godly and more godly and more of his way and his will. Amen? So that was just a little nugget for everybody out there that's starting out with the losing weight thing. My encouragement as Pastor Andrew to everybody here and to everybody watching and those that will tune in later is to start exercising your spirit man. Right on. To start exercising your spirit man so that your soul will become strong within your spirit. And have self-control. Amen. So the only way you can overcome self-control is by the strength of your spirit man. That's right. Right? Because your spirit that God's given you that's come alive gives you the strength to overcome the flesh. Right? In your weakness, he will make you strong. But if your spirit is weak and has no shape to it, then what do you think is going to overcome you? All those muscles. All that good healthy eating. All those vegetables, right? All those things are going to overcome your spirit and you're not going to grow in godliness. Mm -hmm. You're going to grow in worldliness. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're going to be at the gym seven days a week, <laughs> one hour a day, waking up early in the morning, taking protein shots. Who knows what you're doing? Slamming? I don't know what they do these days. But they do things that drive them away from becoming more godly because they're be trying to become more muscle bound. Right. But the Lord, our good God, our Father, Cuba, yes, wants yes. us to become godly. <laughs> and everybody had a lot of tamales and tacos tamales. And, and manudo this last two weeks. Amen? So there's no, don't take no offense to what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this. Exercise is good. Healthy eating is good. Pastor John is always on me about it at times, right? <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I get it. I got to eat healthy, yeah. but it's better to exercise your spirit, man, with the word of God and time with the Lord so that you can overcome gluttony, no yeah. <clears throat> so that you can overcome self-control, mm -hmm. so that you can come overcome the outburst in anger, mm -hmm. so you can overcome all mm -hmm. these things that not are initially of God, but of the things of the world, amen, mm -hmm. or the nature of sin, the flesh, right? Yep. Yeah. So physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better. Mm -hmm. It promises benefits in this life and the life to come. How many of us likes benefits? Yeah. We like benefits, right? I do. We all love benefits. So it'd be good to receive benefits today, bro, and the life to come in the kingdom of God, because that's our promise. Amen. Mm -hmm. But I want to receive some benefits today. Why not? It's a good thing to receive benefits, right? Brother Cuba? Canica, we haven't ever had You're going to be blessed today. The benefit of coming to church this morning was Carnitas and Chosen Part 3. Do you get what I'm saying? So there's things that are beneficial, but all that eating and all that watching is good, but it's better to learn the Word of God this morning. Yes, right. Amen? Amen? So that's what we're here for. To learn the Word of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's go ahead and turn our Bibles back to Colossians. Chapter 3. Colossians 3. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because we are in a new year. Yes, resolutions for the new year are being had. Yes, they're being spoken. They're being written down. I mean, those things will last and they're only going to last for a short time. 
It usually happens like that. Mm-hmm. I've done them before in the past. Oh, this year I'm going to this, I'm going to that. Yeah. And all of a sudden, a month goes by, I'm six weeks in, and all of a sudden I'm going right back to what I was doing. <laughs> Amen. So the reality of it is this. My goal uh, that the Lord put in my heart was to encourage everybody that at the beginning of this year, that you'll draw closer to him. Amen. Not only draw closer to him, but that you'll start to be knitted with your brother and sister in the Lord, in Christ Jesus. Amen. Because the reality of it is, we're coming to a realization that we need one another. Absolutely. It's a dark world out there, right? We're the yeah. light of the world, but it's really dark out there. Right. And at the end of the day, our mindset has been renewed in the things of God versus the old thinking of the ways of the world. So you'll come to a realization that your thinking and their thinking don't come along side by side anymore. So then there becomes a tug and there becomes a little this and a little bit of that and a little bit of distinction of between truth and lies, right? All these things happen because you're children of God born again by the spirit of the Lord and able to renew your mind by reading the word. So my encouragement is this year is that we move into the fruitfulness of what God has for us, what Pastor Mark spoke through the word of the Lord. That we will be fruitful in all our ways to glorify our King, that He will be glorified through our life. Is this making sense? That's the goal. That's the goal this year, is to be fruitful within oneself so that others can start to pick the fruit that you bear so that they can come to the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Like an orange tree does not produce lemons. And a lemon tree does not produce oranges. You get what I'm saying? So the fruit of who we are, we're to bear and to grow and to do all these things so others can actually pluck what God has for them. Amen? Let's keep going. Colossians chapter 3. Let the message about Christ and all its richness fill your lives. New King says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In what? Wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Colossians 3 verse 16. Let the message about Christ and all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other. That's where I got the title. Teach and counsel each other with all wisdom he gives sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts in the New King James Version it says the word of Christ dwell in you richly the definition of dwell is this to live or to stay as a permanent resident So we want the word of God to dwell within us. We want the word of God to reside in us permanently Mm -hmm. until we pass from this place into glory with our king. You want the word of God to dwell in you, right? Richly. And the only way it's going to become richly is if you start to pick up your word. If you start to fellowship with the brother or sister in the Lord. If you start to worship a little bit more. If you start to draw close to God, you'll richly become aware of God's ways by studying and reading the Word. This is very true. And the thing about it is you'll grow in wisdom. See, there's a lot of knowing. I know, I know, I know. (laughs) Right? But there's no wisdom behind the know. Right. As we read the Scriptures... Or as we go forward, I have a scripture in here that I want us really to dwell on and to really receive and grasp. Because the prayers that we should be praying as believers, especially here at the gathering of the Inland Valley here in the city of Fontana, the prayers we should be reading is, Lord, give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation, meaning understanding. I'm not caring about the knowing. Not that you shouldn't or you should, but give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Because understanding has to take place before the knowing can be acted out. That's right. Like there's people that know. I know, bro. Don't don't tell me I know, bro. I know. You get what I'm saying? 
while the reality of your knowing is not doing you any good because you continue <laughs> to do the repetitive thing that you do. Like, I know I shouldn't be hitting this, the crack pipe. I know. Well, there's something behind that that gives you an addiction and there's a spirit that's operating behind it that influences you and there's all these different things that are happening, but you know. Do you get what I'm saying? But as a believer, if we ask for wisdom, God will freely give it. And if you ask for understanding the revelation of what's going on, he will give it. And that's exactly what happened to me yesterday. And then he gave me an understanding to say, hey, son, you're booted with armor. Remember, just pluck those arrows out. You're going to be fine. Guard your heart. I said, amen. Thank you, God. Amen. You get what I'm saying? But that's wisdom that comes from God because I would have never thought of that on my own. Mm -hmm. But now that the wisdom came from the Lord, understanding was given. And when the understanding was given, I was able to operate in the knowing and be able to wake up full of joy this morning. That's just how it operated in my life yesterday. So for the church at the gathering of the Inland Valley and the city of Fontana, there's a lot of words spoken this morning, and I totally agree. But I just know as a believer, God wants to bless you with wisdom. Right. He wants to bless you with understanding. Right. So you'll know how to operate, and you'll know how to get through by his wisdom and his understanding. Mm -hmm. Because everything we've been taught is a lie. Mm -hmm. Everything in the world that we've been taught is a lie. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't own Rosemary Street. And I really thought it was my block. <laughs> and I really thought that everybody on that block was mine. But I never got paid for rent, never got paid for leasing, mm -hmm. never got paid for property, never I even got taxes out of that block. We taxed everywhere else but the block. But it was mine. It was a lie. Right? That's right. That was a lie. Everything that you own is God's. Mm -hmm. But as man, we think everything we own is mine. Mm -hmm. All right, let's keep going. So to dwell is to live or stay as a permanent resident. That's just the definition. Mm -hmm. So allow your lives to to live and to stay in the word of God for 2023. Go deeper in the word. That means just read one portion of scripture and whatever you did in 2022, expand on it a little bit. That means if you read a small devotion in 2022 and 2023, read the devotion and start breaking down the devotion a little bit. And then read it again and break it down again throughout the day. Because the word says to meditate it on the word day and night. So this is a learning for me as well. I'm growing in the things of God. And this is an encouragement that in 2023, God wants us to go deeper with him. Amen? Amen. Amen. In, in the New Living Translation, it says fill your lives. To fill means to make full, to put as much as can be held into to the capacity, to the fullness of the capacity. So each one of us has a capacity that can be filled. Why do I say that? We have Pastor Mark and Joanna that have been serving the Lord and doing the will of God a lot longer than I've been doing and serving the Lord and the will of God. So their capacity is actually bigger than my capacity. This may not, and I'm not trying, I'm not, I'm not boasting in them, I'm boasting in the Lord. But the revelation and the understanding that's given to them is given to them because their capacity is bigger to where they can maintain it and get a full understanding of what God wants to do with the ministry and the things below. So then my capacity is at my capacity, right? How can I? We'll go here. Ah, oh, man, I don't have them. Right? Just think of the little water bottles, the 10-ounce bottles. They're like half. Right? A lot of people buy those. Why? Because they don't want to waste water. Yeah. You go to a party, you go to the park. I, I'm learning this, right? I'm telling my wife, don't buy the full bottles because all you do is pick up, you know, all we do and you do is pick up full or half bottles of water left everywhere, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Buy the smaller bottles so they can drink it and throw it away. Half the time, people don't throw it away. That's okay. That's what we do. We serve. <laughs> that was a note. <laughs> throw away your trash. <laughs> Clean up after the shop. <laughs> So you got a 10 ounce bottle of water and if that's you and you're in the 10 ounce bottle, praise the Lord because you're walking with the Lord and you're a child of God and that's the capacity of water that you can hold. 
Meaning that's the understanding that you're grasping, but that's only the understanding you're grasping for that time, at that moment, in that season, and in that year. And eventually you'll go from 10 ounces to maybe an, you know, a 16 ounce bottle. And then your capacity will grow there. So you want to fill your capacity from 10 ounces to 16 ounces with the word of God. And then once that gets full to capacity, God gives you continuously gives you more wisdom, understanding, and your capacity will grow from 16 ounces to maybe a 32 ounce big gulp from 7-Eleven. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and you just keep filling yourself. You fill yourself, but you're dwelling on the things of God and you're filling yourself with the word of God. And it could be worship, and it could be another person pouring into you. But you're committed unto the Lord, and as you're committed unto the Lord, you're being filled. That's why, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. Brother Ramon. That's a prayer, but fill me with your Holy Spirit. Right. Do you get what I'm saying? Because life will drain you. Yeah. The Bible says, there's a, there's a portion in the scripture in the book of Acts where it says, Call me those that are full of the Holy Spirit. Meaning, they were looking for workers, but they had to be full. Full of the Holy Spirit. See, if you're not full of the Holy Spirit, the enemy will come in like a roaring lion and he'll do what he can to do to get you to fall over. It's easier for an empty bottle to fall over on its back than it is a full bottle to fall over on its back. Amen? Sure. Amen. So just take that into picture. That just came from the water. Now, a bottle of water, if you just tap it barely, it'll maybe bobble, but it stands. An empty bottle, you tap it, that thing will fall right over. So my encouragement is that if you're 10 ounce, 16 ounce, or 32 ounce, that's where you are at with the Lord, and that's okay. But continue to fill yourself and dwell in the house of the Lord and dwell in his word daily. So look at where you were at in 2022. And as Pastor Joanna said earlier, don't look at the past and look at the back things behind you. That's true. But recognize and examine yourself where you were at in 2022 so you can move forward in greater things in the knowledge of God. Amen? Is this making sense? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like recognize, hey man, I only read the devotion once a week. There is believers out there that only read the devotion once a week. They got all these emails. They got all this content. It comes through the phone. It comes through the email. Their YouTube will subscribe. You know, it'll pop up and all these different things. All this information is coming at it. But the thing is, and the question you have to ask yourself is, are you opening it and studying it or reading and hearing it? You get what I'm saying? We got all these tools and technology these days that it all just floods my phone. And, and half the times I don't open it because why? I seek God for his face that... I may see him and get an understanding of what he wants to give me. And there's times I go in there and I hear a, a, a YouTube here and there. I'm not saying I don't. But what I'm saying is grow in your relationship with the Lord. Uh -huh. Personally. Yeah. And then come with your brothers and sisters in Christ. And worship the Lord together. You know what I mean? And do what we did this morning, pour into one another. And do what we do on Friday nights, pour into one another. And what we do on Wednesdays night, pour into one another. Because ideally, we have to be filled with the things of God and not the things of the world. Amen. We have to be filled with truth and not filled with lies. We have to be filled with light and not filled with darkness. We have to be filled, right, with the things of God and not the things of the world. And it's very easy to fill yourself up. It is. Like, you want to be that clear, crystal aquafina. <laughs> <laughs> Not that dark, cloudy Dr. Pepper. Sorry to you that I love Dr. Pepper because I love it too. Don't get me wrong. I like it. But what I'm saying is when you look at the two, you're like, man, water is beautiful. I can see through it. As a matter of fact, if I put it to the sunlight, it might just beam right through it. I might be able to start a fire. I'm just saying. <laughs> That was another nun. <laughs> the water of God will start a fire in your life. Yeah, yeah. That's true. The living water is living. Yeah. It yeah. flows and it shapes and it molds and it goes yeah. down and it streams. And even hard rock can't stop it. That's right. That's right. Do you get what I'm saying? That's just water alone. Right. So if you read and be filled with the Lord daily, you will start to ignite and God will start showing you the gifts what Moses talked about. Brother Moses. In the book of Romans, it talks about if you can serve, then serve well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you have a That's gift right. of giving, then give abundantly, in my words. Mm -hmm. 
Do you get what I'm saying? If you have the gift of teaching, then teach it well. That's what the scriptures teach. And if you have all these different gifts that God's given freely, then do it well. Everything that you do, whether it's serving, giving, loving, being kind, gentle, whatever that looks like, just start to acknowledge it and walk in it. Because a lot of times, I, when I was first serving the Lord, I, there was things I would just hold on to and hold back on. Uh, I don't know. But it was a lie that was coming from the devil. The reason I say that, because everything that... Oh, help me, Lord. I, know, I don't want to ramble on, man, but there's so much. It's been like two weeks. <laughs> it's been like two weeks. It's been like two weeks. You ever see the cartoon with the devil and the angel? The devil and the angel, right? There's a cartoon. The devil hangs on one shoulder and the angel on the other. Right? And somebody's always speaking into your ear? Yeah. Well, that's the spiritual sense of it. Somebody that wrote that cartoon got it right. Yeah. Because there's always an influence that comes into your mind that is spoken in the spirit that gets you to operate in things that you should operate in. Mm -hmm. So the more you fill yourself with the love of God and the word of God and the worship of God and the surroundings of your brothers and sisters in Christ, mm -hmm. the more you'll start to recognize the lie and the deception of the right. enemy and the world that is being operated by Satan himself. That's right. The world is a puppet. I, I, I hate to break the news to you, and if you are of the world and don't know the Lord, I pray that one day your salvation will come to pass. Amen? Amen. But I'm speaking truth. I was a puppet of the world, meaning I was a puppet of Satan at one time. We all were because yeah. we're all saved by grace. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is that there's things that happen in the supernatural that we cannot explain. But you're being influenced by something. Mm. Right. Amen? Does it, Amen? Does it make any sense? We have angels yes. that take heed to the word, meaning... They, they, they follow instruction as long as it's according to the word. Is this making sense? You can call for protection. Oh, I'm spinning. Oh. I'm spinning. <laughs> Man, I feel like this. Amen. So fill yourself. And here's the good news. You can go from 10 ounces to 16 ounces to 32 ounces. You can go to a gallon. You can go into a 5 gallon jug and I don't know what's beyond that but let me tell you if you're five gallons full of the Holy Spirit that's a whole lot mm. of goodness in your life amen? amen so I'm just trying to say is this is dwell and fill yourself with the word of God this year amen, amen? let's amen. keep moving it says teach and counsel so right now we're being taught amen I'm even teaching myself believe it or not but we're being taught something by the word of God that's flowing through me that God's using me by his grace. But it says teach and counsel each other. Teaching and admonishing one another. But it also says in Psalms, right? But counsel is this. How many of us, I don't know if this is a good question to ask, but I'm going to ask it. <coughs> Over these two weeks, how many of us missed one another? Do you get what I'm saying? Like, did you feel like there was a void in your life because you didn't come together with your brothers and sisters in Christ? Yeah. yeah. Like, I can't be the only one. Just because the Lord's put me where he's put me, I can't be the only one saying, man, I miss my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Like, I can't be the only one. Because I get counsel from you guys. It gives me great encouragement. Just like Paul said that when you show up and I'm able to teach and we're able to communicate back and forth, I grow on those things. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing for you. You grow on the teaching, but yet you can counsel one another. That's why it says teach and counsel one another. Mm -hmm. Like when Moses gets up and speaks and Pastor Mark gets up and speaks and Pastor Ross gets up and speaks and Brother Mondo gives a word. All these things that play because of God, everything helps to admonish each one of us mm -hmm. in the things of God. Counsel means this, advice. Mm -hmm. I pray that if you're a believer... Filled with the Holy Spirit. That you aren't getting advice from somebody that does not have the Spirit of God. That's right. That's right. Follow the direction of your supervisor. 
Follow direction, right? You got to do your job. There's laws that are in place for a reason. Clock in on time. I'm not saying go against your supervisor because he's not a supervisor. I'm saying he's supervising you how to get the job done. But what I'm saying is that you need counsel with somebody that's filled with the Holy Spirit so you can be advised of what's right, wrong, and vice versa. Wrong and right. Is this making sense? So counsel means this. Advice. Like, I need advice. And Pastor Mark said, hey, I got an open door, bro. Like, hey, even though I'm over there, I'm right here. And Paul said the same thing. Even though I'm not there, my spirit's with you. So in the supernatural, in that sense, it's true. Even when Pastor Mark goes to Africa, his spirit is here with me. Yep. Yeah. That's deep. Your spirit sits in heavenly places. I don't know. I can't explain it. But all I know is I'm in heaven right now. And when Pastor Mark is in Africa, his spirit's with me to comfort me. But yet, we have technology where I can call and say, hey, bro, I need some advice. Yep. Just like have I gotten there yet? Probably not. <laughs> have I gotten there yet? Probably not, right? But what I'm saying is I'm growing into that. Mm -hmm. Because as time comes and pressure comes and trials and persecution and intimidation, I have to be able to make that phone call to somebody because I need advice. Somebody that has a bigger capacity than I have. And I'm not boasting. I'm boasting in the Lord because that's how the Lord operates. Everything is orderly in the kingdom of God. That's right. And that even comes from, you get what I'm saying? The chain of command in the worldly aspect, right? That was in the world and the warehouse. There's the manager. There's the area manager. There's a property. You know what I mean? Like all these different managers. And then there's you. Well, God works in that manner. Like, I respect my elders. I, I follow advice that's given to me. And then I take it up with the Lord. And I say, okay, Lord, I see. I get it. Help me to understand this, right? Amen. So counsel means advice, opinion, or instruction. Grab a hold of that definition. Not all counsel's good for you. <laughs> it depends where it's coming from and where it's coming from. Is it coming from that little devil on this shoulder or is it coming from the angel on this shoulder that's giving me counsel right now? Advice. Like, we have to be sharp. That's what I'm saying as a church and a body that is small but powerful. We have to have the wisdom of God. That's right. That's right. Without the wisdom of God, we're going to take counsel from anybody that's yeah. not right. even of the Lord. That's right. And then we're going to wonder why we're in the trap or in the snare. Yeah. And then we're going to wonder why these things continuously continue to happen to us because we don't understand. Amen? Amen. Watch this. Advice, opinion, or instruction given in directing the judgment or conduct of another. God will judge the sinners. It's not our job as believers to judge the sinners. That's right. He's on the throne. God will judge the sinners. That's right. I got to make that clear because I'm probably going to roll up some feathers. <laughs> but within the body of Christ, we can hold each other accountable. That's right. That's right. Like you can judge with your judgment because you have the spirit of God, whether Pastor Andy is speaking truth or not. Like, that's a judgment that you have upon me that you can counsel me in and give me advice and say, hey, bro, I don't think that was of the Lord. And if it wasn't of the Lord, can you show me where it's at? Because maybe I don't know where it's at. And that's my duty to follow up and say, hey, bro, it's right here. Hold me accountable. Yeah. Paul judged the people within the church. Mm -hmm. sure did. <laughs> don't judge me, bro. Only God can judge me. <laughs> that was Tupac. Mm. <laughs> Don't judge me. Only God can judge me. But what I'm trying to say, as a body of Christ, we're to judge one another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In a godly judgment, meaning the word of God is your measure to judge against right and wrong. I'm not saying don't judge the sinner. That's God's duty. But within the church, we're to grow and develop and hold each other accountable. That's why in the book of Colossians, he said, take off the old and those were a lot of ugly things. Yeah. Mischief behavior. <laughs> lies. Mm -hmm. All those wicked deeds and wickedness. He's like, throw it off. That's the old stuff. And walk into the new, which is love, kinding, right? Love and kindness. You get what I'm saying? Like, man, 
I'm like, God, you're just amazing. He always leaves me in awe. I'm like, you're telling me my brother can judge me if it comes from the word of God? Sure, why not? If you're doing something wrong that's not of me, then why wouldn't he judge you? Because he's walked it out and seen it more than you have, so to speak, right? Most have been walking with the Lord longer than I have. Doesn't mean that my capacity is smaller or bigger. It just means that he may see things that I don't see, and that's why I need counsel and advice. As a pastor, I'm growing, and I lean on the Lord wholeheartedly. But I'm using my brother as an example, okay? Don't take no offense. I'm just using Moses. Like, Moses knows the word of God. Judging the <laughs> he may not judge me, but he corrects me all the time. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that don't let nobody fool you and say, hey, bro, only God can judge me. That's not true. As believers, we're to be knitted in love and to, we're to correct one each other and we're to be accountable to one another. That's what being knitted means. If I wasn't knitted in love, Pastor Mark, can you read what you just told us earlier? Which one? Do you remember the Proverbs? I know I put you on the spot. 27, 6? Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, I, I can find that. Listen to this. Brother Mo's like, oh, how'd you do that? I see you. <laughs> it's good. This is good counsel today. This is good teaching, right? I'm getting hot. Let's see what the ESV says. I, I read it in King James. It's, it's, it's okay. 27, 6 says, uh, Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Hmm. And profuse are the kisses of an enemy. <laughs> Anybody else has another translation? Yeah, I'm profuse. <laughs> profuse. Yeah, what's that? Go ahead. Mine says, uh, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Mm. Kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Deceitful, that's it. Are deceitful. Yeah, that's better. That's so would you be deceitful? Would you rather be lied to and kiss and say, ah, right? Mm -hmm. And be lied to and hurt for who knows how long? Or be told the truth and correction and be upset for a little bit, but come to a realization and understanding that that person was right. Absolutely. I'd rather be wrong in the moment, corrected by the person that knows, and come to an understanding by God's wisdom to know that I was wrong and that person was right. Then to say, no, I'm right. Continue to hug on me, kiss on me, and give me and bless me and lie to me and allow me to walk in, in lies. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a good scripture. Proverbs 27 6. Amen? Yeah. Right. But Amen. the fool won't listen. Let's see what the New Living says. Oh, here we go. I like this one too. Yeah. Wounds from a sincere friend. Uh oh. Wounds from your best friend, your sincere friend, the one you went to school with in Sequoia and Fontana High School, <laughs> and then you never went to college. But your best friend, <laughs> sincere friend, it's better for the wounds from a best friend than it is better for many kisses from the enemy. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? I'd rather my friend Tono tell me the truth yep. than for him to kiss me and lie to me and drive me away. That I may be deceived and fallen into things that I don't need to fall into. And I use him because he was my best friend growing up. And I know in a worldly aspect, we would watch out for one another. Sometimes we thought things were correct, but they weren't correct because we had a worldly thinking. But outside of the worldly thinking, I honor that because he was truly a sincere friend. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's better to be told the truth from somebody that loves you than to be lied to than somebody that doesn't love you. Because if they love you, they're lying. And if they love you, they're... Never mind, let's talk. <laughs> because if they're lying to you, they say they love you. But if they love you, they wouldn't lie to you. Right? That's right. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm man, I, I'm always in awe with how God just speaks. I really am. <clears throat> Okay, back to Colossians. But kisses feel good, so you don't really <laughs> recognize that it's coming from an enemy because it feels good. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, that's so good. They can't be lying to me. But the reality is, it's deceitful. It's candy. deceitful. Tell you what you want to hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, you want the candy. So it's hard to discern unless you're in the spirit to really recognize by the spirit. Yeah. So this is why we pray, Lord, give me wisdom mm -hmm. and revelation. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're going to get there. I believe my notes are correct. Because the enemy, usually an enemy likes to stay as close as they possibly could. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you don't recognize it's an enemy unless 
the spirit be the same. Amen. Let's keep going. So, 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 so let me let me say this. In that aspect of it, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to be fully filled, full of the Holy Spirit. Don't allow yourself to go midpoint, quarter point. Stay full of the Spirit of God so that the Spirit of wisdom will give you an understanding that that person is truly an enemy. Or that person is truly just comforting you so that they can be comforted in their misery. You've heard the saying, right? Misery loves company. Misery loves company. Bad character corrupts good character. Is that how the scriptures read it? Bad company yes. corrupts good character. Bad company. Yeah, bad company corrupts good character. So let's just flip that. This isn't biblical right now, but bad character corrupts good character. Think about that. You're trying to do good just because you're a good person. But you get around a bunch of bad people, and all of a sudden, if you hang around them long enough, you're going to be doing the same old bad things they're doing. Amen? Amen. But here's the flip side of it, is that if you fill yourself with the word, if you seek out God for yourself, if you stay attentive to the assembly of the saints, if you do what God's called you to do to walk out his will so he can show you are in him, the basics of that is this. The good character of those that are around you will start to build character in you by the spirit of wisdom. Not only by the spirit of wisdom, by growth of being rooted. Amen. I just did a flip on it. So what I'm saying is this, if you're in the house of the Lord or you're watching from the live feed, you're in the right, correct spot. Mm -hmm. Amen. Why? Because a little bit of me is going to rub off on you and a little bit of him is going to rub off on me. Like that might not be scriptural as far as the rub off, but what I'm trying to say is that Pastor Mark's character, I can grab the goodness of God in his life and be able to grab a hold of who he is in God and be able to run with that too. It's true. Right? For sure? <laughs> um, <laughs> like, you get what I'm saying? Like, if you hang around with your brothers and sisters in Christ and you're rubbing arms with somebody else trying to start a fire, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to start a fire that's a black smoke. And it's not going to be a holy fire. It's going to be a fire of the Lord that's smoky, dirty, and everything else. Like you got to rub arms with somebody that's going to give you a spark that's, right. that's going to flame that the Holy Spirit will burn. You know, like, like yeah, you got to be around people that are of God. That's right. Don't stay in the closet. Don't stay at home. Get into a fellowship. It don't matter what church, but get into a fellowship because it's not about. An individual church, it's about you being connected to the body. Yes. That's right. Because you're a part of the body with a gift that needs to be worked yes. and used for the kingdom of God. Yes. Get over your selfishness. Mm. Get over yourself. Because the Bible says if you think you're better than anybody, you're only fooling yourself. I'm no better than anybody here in this room. All I know is I'm somebody trying to tell somebody about Jesus. Yeah. Because he set me free. Yeah. That's it. I'm nobody trying to tell everybody about Jesus. Amen. Amen. His salvation, his power to save them from the deception and the lies of the world. And to snatch them out of darkness into this glorious light. So that they can walk in power and authority to overcome all those things of the past. Mm -hmm. Because it's a new day. Same new day. New, new day. day. Yes, it's a new day. Yeah. Matter of fact, it's a new year. Yeah. It's 2023. Yeah. Oh, that's right. It's 2023. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Admonishing means this. Right? Because we talked about counsel a little bit. That was in the New Living tra uh, Translation. In the King James Version, it says admonishing. Admonishing definition is to caution advice or counsel against something that's the new king's james version what's the same thing in the nsab does anybody have it no then no worries no worries admonishing look at the definition of that look at how counsel says this advise opinion instruct to judge or conduct of another right admonishing means to caution to advise and to counsel against so this tells you clearly 
clarity that we need to counsel one another against the things that are lies, against the things that are false, against the teachers that are teaching false. Like we need to make sure that we're advising one another that those things aren't of God. Because the word was that this year there was going to be a lot of false teaching. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of false teaching. So for us, we need to be cautious. And we need to advise one another like, nah, bro, that stuff is not cool. Mm -hmm. That stuff is not right. And I'm just bringing it to your awareness so like that, you, you can seek God on it, right? Mm -hmm. This is Paul. Paul was crazy for the Lord. <laughs> That's better, right? Yeah. <laughs> he was crazy for the Lord. There was a guy that was sleeping with his mother-in-law. I think it was his mother-in-law. Yeah. In Corinthians, and like the whole church knew that he was sleeping with his mother in law, nobody said anything. Why? Because he was like, Don't judge me, don't judge me, church. I don't judge me, right? And Paul comes up to the scene and says, What? Don't judge you. Matter of fact, I'm gonna send you out to who? Satan. Satan. So that you'll come to the foreknowledge and understanding and come to a repentant heart that your soul just may be saved. Mm. The church don't do that nowadays. Uh, well, it's probably better than to try to hold on to the burden. Just like, go over there, man. Get out of here. <laughs> Instead of trying to carry that weight, you know, if they don't want to listen. Oh, for the pastor, yeah, definitely. Yeah. For the eldership, of course. Mm. But the reality of it is, if you learn the scriptures, it's a small thing of yeast that will corrupt the whole dough. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's why Paul did it. He said, oh no. No, 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 no. Out. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You're not going to corrupt the people of Corinth with the way and lifestyle that you're living. That's what he was saying. You're going to have to go through it and figure it out yourself. And I pray that your soul will be saved, that God will have grace upon your life. But don't come in here corrupting everybody else with your sneaky thinking. That's basically what Paul is saying. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Right? So was, judge, uh, was Paul wrong for judging the action that this man was taking? No. no. He did the right thing mm -hmm. in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. He pleased God, not man. Amen? Amen? Okay. Here we go. Thankful people. Some notes. Thankful people can worship wholeheartedly. Gratitude opens our hearts to God's peace and enables us to put on love. I'm going to say it one more time. Thankful people can worship. Amen? Mm -hmm. When you're thankful, you can worship the Lord. Like when you're thankful just for life in general, you're able to worship the Lord with gratitude. Not only that, when you're worshiping the Lord for being alive and gratitude in the heart, it actually enables you to become part of his love because you've given him access because you're giving him reverence. Like we sang in that song, you're giving reverence to the Lord for another day of life. And the gratitude that overflows will overflow onto others. And because of that, you'll start to operate in love. Amen. 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 Look at this notes. These are just notes. Discontent people constantly evaluate what's wrong. Unhappy people evaluate everything that's wrong in your life. Are you in their life? And we're getting there. What's wrong with their lot in life and compare themselves negatively with others. Mm. So in other words, they will be, uh, they'll be discontent with their wrongs in their life and then they start comparing themselves with others. Mm. Is this making sense? Yeah. Discontent people constantly evaluate what's wrong with their lot in life and compare themselves negatively with others. So we're people that are thankful. Amen. Amen. Now you can say I'm thankful. thankful. Say I'm grateful. I'm grateful. For God's grace upon my life. For God's grace upon my life. Amen. 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 Where are we at on time? Oh, we're doing really good. Here. All right, verse 17. And then it talked about singing songs and hymns, spiritual songs to God with thankful heart. Verse 17 says, whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord. Right? So we're actually representatives of the Lord. Amen? So whatever you do, 
or say, do it as a representative of the Lord. Lord Jesus means to bring honor to Christ in every aspect and activity of our daily lives. As a Christian, we are to represent Christ at all times, wherever you go and whatever you say, to represent Christ wherever you go and whatever you say. Be a representative of him, right? Uh -huh. Here was a question. What impression do people have of Christ when they see or talk to you? Because you're supposed to represent God in all his ways. Amen. Amen. We're growing, we're growing into that. We're growing into that. So when people come across you, they will recognize the change in your life. What changes could you make in your life in order to honor Christ? Those are just two questions that I put down. What changes could you make in your life to honor Christ? It's a new year. It's time to evaluate yourself. Say, Lord, what do I need to change in my life that will honor you? Like, what should I give up? This is my, for you, God, this year. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give this thing up, whatever it is, so that I can honor you just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. What changes could you make in your life? It's a question. Amen? Amen. All right. I put on my notes, for me, it's to build a deeper relationship with my Lord, our Lord. To build a deeper relationship with my wife. She wasn't here to hear it. She's in the restroom. <laughs> she needed to hear that one. You know what I mean? Right? Right? For me, it's to build a deeper relationship with my Lord, first of all. Second of all, it's for me to grow deeper in, in with the relationship with my wife. There's got to be change. I put that. There's got to be change. Because nobody's perfect. Nobody has yet met that portion. Right? We're all in a race. And we need to run it well. There's something in my life that has to change. And I'm asking the Lord. And I'm writing those things down. Right? Like what needs to change in my life for me to serve you better? What do I need to lay aside so that I may be able to seek you a little bit more? That you know ties up a lot of time. And then vice versa for my wife. Because your word says for me to love my wife like Christ loves the church. How do I love my wife like you love us, Christ Jesus, Lord, my Savior, my Abba? Like how do I love my wife like you love me? Like that's something I need to grow in, right? Each one of us probably needs to grow in that area. We've got to learn to love ourselves. But not only that, that's true. You can't love somebody until you love yourself. Like I love myself. But I still, there's areas in my life where I'm growing to even love my wife more. Because think about that. The love for Christ for me, I can't explain it. It's too heavy. It's too thick. It's too rich. It's too all of that. I can't explain it. I know he loves me and I have a portion of his love. But one time I was worshiping and I felt like the Lord just sprinkled a little bit of love on me. And my knees buckled and I cried. And I'm like, what the heck was that? And it was love. Something I never felt before. Never felt it before. So I'm like, man, you just gave me a little bit of sprinkle. Like, give me a little sprinkle so I can sprinkle towards my wife. You know what I mean? Mm. So here's some notes. So today is January 1st. And I put many come up with New Year's resolutions to do this and to do that. And the biggest one is always to lose weight. <laughs> I, I got ahead of myself earlier. I was just flowing, right? But here's what I want to say on that portion of it. This is not scripture right now. So today's the first. Say first. First. first, first. If you're taking notes out there in Facebook, I, I, I encourage you. Because a lot of people want to shed off weight. And in my notes I put, but today's the day to lose everything that was written in Colossians 3, 5 through 9. Mm. So don't just lose weight, but lose the things of the old nature and the old man. Colossians 3, <coughs> verses 5 through 9. Lose those things out of your life. <coughs> because we're talking about godly exercise, right? Yes. <laughs> and then I said to be fit in Colossians chapter 3, verses 10 through 15. So lose 3 through 9 and be fit in 10 through 15. That's for you to do some homework. That's for you to read the word of God. 
That's for you to pick up and say, okay, these are the things that I'm snipping off because it's nothing but fat and it don't belong. But these are the things that are healthy, tone, and they're going to get me through my daily walk. Amen. Take off the old, put on the new. Amen? Amen. So be fit in Colossians 3, verses 10 through 15. And then here's some, here, here I'm just going to lead them to the closing. I think I'm going to try to land the plane right here. So let me ask you a couple of questions. That was some good stuff right there, right? Yeah. The Lord wants us to be filled, right? He wants us, right? He wants us to have wisdom and revelation and understanding, right? So let me ask you a question. Don't raise your hand. It's just a question. Who likes social media? Who likes social media? They're probably laughing out there in Facebook land right now, right? <laughs> Who likes social media? Who likes social media? You, you know what I mean? I'm just saying. I can scream it down the halls because it'll echo and a lot of people won't raise their hand, but they like it. <laughs> Who likes posting? <laughs> These are just questions. It's okay, girl. Nobody's going to like, oh, this is going to get better. I'm almost through. But the question is, right, who doesn't like social media? If you're not on it, great, stay off of it. You're in a good place. <laughs> but if you're on it, you can't lie to yourself and say you don't like it because you tend to be on it all the time. And you like posting, right? Who likes going on other people's pages? I could be the first. Hey, Pastor Andy, Andrew, right, Andy? Brother Andy, Pastor Andrew. That was my declaration too. In 2023, I'm Andrew. Amen. Yeah, amen. I'm Andrew, right? But what I'm saying is like, I could be the first to say I've gone on other people's pages <laughs> just to see where they're at. <laughs> are they really where they say they are? No. People don't want to admit to those things, but the reality of it is everybody goes on other people's pages. At one point in time in your life, you follow through on somebody else's page just to see where they're at. Maybe not, maybe so. <laughs> who, spend, uh, who spends minutes or hours on Facebook, on Instagram, on Snapchat, on TikTok, on Twitter, on YouTube? Who spends all this time on all the social media, right? I can lift up both of my hands and say, I get caught up in it sometimes. I like YouTube. You like YouTube, right? <laughs> I don't have Snapchat and I don't have TikTok, but I have Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And I can get caught up in those things, you know what I mean? Yeah. So the majority of us can agree mm -hmm. that we live in a social media time. Right. It's a new era. It's a new era. And I have a challenge for each one of us at the gathering. I'm specifically talking to the, to the gathering. To my brothers and sisters in the Lord. And this is what I put. Number one, pray and ask the Lord for wisdom and revelation. Spiritual wisdom and spiritual insight so that you may come to know your Savior and my Savior in a deeper level. That's number one. It's a challenge. A lot of people might, may not like to be challenged. I get it. But that's just who I am. I'm a personality guy, kind of like... If you challenge me, let's do it, you know? That's just me. Not everybody's comfortable with these things or the way I may approach it. But at the end of the day, the challenge I have for each one of us is to say a prayer before you open up your word and say, Lord, give me the spirit of wisdom mm -hmm. and give me the spirit of revelation. Amen. So that I may come to know you deeper in 2023. This will grow us into the representatives he wants us to be. Amen. Amen. That's a biblical prayer. That's a biblical prayer. Mm -hmm. Let's turn there. Ephesians 1.17. Yeah, that's it. Ephesians 1.17. We're going to wrap up. I know. 117. And Go ahead, Pastor Mark. Read 16 and 17. That I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, 
may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Mm. Having the eyes of your heart enlightened that you may know what is the hope that which he has called you. Mm. In, the new, in the New Living it says this, I have not stopped thanking God for you. Mm. I pray for you constantly. Amen. Asking God the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. to give you spiritual wisdom and insight that you might grow in the knowledge of God. Amen. Spiritual wisdom and revelation in Him, in the knowledge of Him. Amen? Amen. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope that He has given to those who He called. So that you will become aware of your call in your life. The hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Amen. The day of redemption will come. That we'll be back with our Father. Amen? Amen. Okay? So that is scriptural. So that was number one. So that's Ephesians 1.17. And here's where we'll probably get a little bit of pushback, but I'm okay with it. The challenge that I have for us, for us to grow in wisdom and understanding. It's January 1st. Everybody knows Amen. this. I'm speaking to you. Know? It's January 1st. And the challenge that I have for us at the gathering of the Inland Valley is for us to read a Proverbs a day. Amen. Simple. A Proverbs a day. Why do I say that? Because there's 31 Proverbs. Yeah. And there's 31 days right. in January. Amen. And the book of Proverbs is wisdom. Amen. So when you come to open up the book of Proverbs, you say, Lord, give me your understanding of what I'm about to read so that I may have wisdom to walk this out. Amen. Because we're to be doers of the Lord and not just hearers. Yes. We're not just to give fat spiritually, but we're supposed to receive to release. That's yes. right. Is this true or not? So that's a challenge. Amen. Here's the fun part. Is that when you wake up and read your Proverbs, so today sometime you got to read Proverbs chapter 1. That's right. Well, what I'm going to ask is this, is that you pray and ask God to give you those things. Wisdom and understanding. And as you start to read it nice and slow, don't rush for Instagram. That's right. Don't rush for Facebook. Don't rush for YouTube. <laughs> don't rush for the Disney Channel. Read Proverbs chapter 1 nice and slow after you say that prayer and just read it and go all the way down to the end of the Proverbs. But before you get to the end of the Proverbs, the Lord's going to speak to you. Mm -hmm. And something's going to illuminate and pop out at you. And that's the meat that God wants you to know that's today. Right. Amen. Amen. You don't have to read and understand that whole thing, but whatever the Lord speaks to you through that word, you grab that scripture, and here's the fun part. Copy it, paste it, and drop it on the band app. Mm. Amen. Mm. Oh, that's cool. That is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I say this? Because this year, the Lord is calling us to be knitted in love. Yes. Yeah. He's calling us to be of one mind. Mm -hmm. He's calling us to be of one spirit. Mm -hmm. And I'm even going to take it a step further is that you can copy, you can paste, and you can drop it. We have a small fellowship. It's not like we're going to shut down the internet by doing this. <laughs> we're not going to collapse the internet by doing this. Right. We're doing this so we can build one another up in faith. That's right. And let there be no condemnation in Christ. There is no condemnation. Because those That's scriptures, right. when, when they hit you in the heart and you post them, you're revealing your heart. Amen. So Amen. don't be afraid or don't allow what people say around you. Yeah. you, you Intimidate you. Amen. Nobody you know? condemns. No. Amen. Yes. No, no, I haven't even got to the finish. And Brother Moses just said, yeah. the Bible says to be bold and courageous. Yeah. Right. So it's going to take boldness for you to say, God's speaking to me through this. Yeah. I like this portion in it. Yeah. It's not a good thing, but hey, at the end of the day, it is a good thing because this is where I'm at. Oh, you're going to drop it on the band app. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it's totally up to you if you're like Brother Moses. He'll comment in it. Like, this spoke to me. 
Yeah. Let's turn to Proverbs real quick. Bro. <laughs> I'm going to give an example. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, examples are good, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I was reading Proverbs a day, every day for like a couple of years, and Proverbs. it always spoke to me. And it always hurt. <laughs> it always sounds good. There was always something. Proverbs 1. I'll take number two. Their purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline. This is why it hurts. Because it's called discipline and wisdom. Exactly. Wisdom and discipline. So if you can be bold with yourself and bold with your brothers and sisters in Christ, you, you, I can see the warrior you can become in Christ Jesus. By overcoming your fears, overcoming your faults, overcoming your doubtiness, all those things. If you just grab one scripture out of there, mine would be verse two right now, just off the top of my head. The purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline, to help them understand the insight of the wise. Well, Lord, I like wisdom because it guides me and it directs me. She speaks to me as a matter of fact, and I pray that your wisdom will just guide me through to tomorrow with your grace upon my life, right? Amen. Like somewhere in that Proverbs, the Lord is going to speak to you. And the reason I say that to grab it and post it is because you need to engage with your brothers and sisters in Christ. We've been separated for two weeks. And I'm like, in my spirit, man, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I feel like I'm forsaking the assembly of the saints. I feel like I'm not around my brothers and sisters in Christ. Like, how do we get connected and how can we stay knitted at this far distance? It's technology. Yeah. <clears throat> you drop a scripture, and I'm not saying drop the whole Proverbs. I'm saying drop whatever touches your heart. Mm -hmm. It don't mean the portion of the, the discipline part, right? You don't have to put the part that's disciplining you, but you can put the part that's teaching you. Mm -hmm. Keep the discipline portion for yourself. Say, I got to work on this, God. I see. I hear you. I hear you. I got I hear you. I got to get rid of my wicked ways. Okay. <laughs> I hear you. I'm not going to blast that one on the band app, right? But I am going to blast this one on the right. <laughs> like Wisdom, reverence of the Lord, right? Is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. I could post that, right? And it's an encouragement for somebody else within our church. Amen. God's church. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amen. Right? So to Brother Moses' portion of it. If it's discipline that's coming at you and you don't want to post it, you don't post the discipline yeah. portion of it. But I encourage you to grab a hold of the discipline because God is a good father yeah. and he's trying to teach you the right way. Mm -hmm. So you receive that for yourself. But something that pops up that's going to move you forward in the things that God post that. Whatever you feel like posting, but post something. Post something. So Pastor Andy can go on there and just like I do on other people's pages, I can say, hey, I'm going to jump on Banda and I'm going to see if anybody that I can be encouraged by. You don't realize but pastors need encouragement. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You get what I'm saying? We need encouragement. Yeah. It brings great joy to know that people that you're preaching and teaching, that they're receiving and, and moving forward in the things of God. Like, I need those things. I'll be honest. I need them. I'm not a person that needs to be catered to, but I'm a person that wants to be encouraged by others because God encourages me and I'm encouraging others, but I also want to be encouraged in return. I'm not saying you have to, but hey, we're the brothers and sisters in the Lord. Amen? Amen? All right. Number two was read all of Proverbs chapter one today. And out of Proverbs, grab a hold of the scripture that illuminates to you or pops out to you and speaks to you. Right? Brother Moses brought a good point. Not everybody's going to want to put the discipline part. I get that. <laughs> but my encouragement is there's something in there that's good that's going to change you tremendously. Right? Mm -hmm. Number three was posted on the band app. It's social networking for the gathering. We can teach and counsel one another because that's what we're talking about, right? You can get counsel by somebody else's posting. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? The Lord will counsel you through that. Did you know you can comment on it? That you can do different things. You can even reach out to other people within the congregation on that app. You can even make note of it. Say, hey, this is a scripture that, that pops out to me and this is what I received out of it. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to draw a connection through the Lord for all of us to be engaged, if this is making sense. Number four is be accountable. Self-examine oneself, grab a hold, or maybe even a partner. 
Like there was a lot of things that were said between me and Moses that I can learn from him and he can learn from me. We are a small body and a big portion of the body of Christ. And we can be held accountable to each other. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Through the posting, through the scriptures, learn to be accountable for one another. Amen? Amen. Number five was commit to the Lord. And I'll, I'll end, end with this. Psalms 37 says this. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. Amen. He will make your innocence radiant like the dawn and the justice of your cause will shine like the new day sun. <coughs> Think about that for a minute. <coughs> With whatever you post, just trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. If the Lord puts it in your heart and your heart starts to tremble, I don't know if I should, I don't know if I should, I don't know if I should. It's the Lord telling you, you should. <laughs> overcome, overcome that. It's just like a little unction that God's giving you. Post it, post it. It's okay. You can overcome this. Post it. My encouragement is be bold, be courageous, and post it. And we can connect through that. It's pretty simple. But I promise you, in those Proverbs is wisdom. Mm -hmm. It said it right there. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, let's stand to our feet this morning. Go ahead and close your eyes. <laughs> I'm going to pray us out. We got to get prayed out. We got prayed in, but we got to get prayed out. So here's some notes that I put as I pray us out. So let's teach and counsel one another through the book of Proverbs. Let's commit to the Lord this day. Let's pray and ask for wisdom, revelation in this hour. Let our roots grow in him so that our lives will be built upon Christ, Jesus. Let us be knitted in love and put off the old and put on the new. Let us renew our minds and repent daily. Let us renew our minds and repent daily so that we may bring glory to God. That his salvation power will be at hand. That through his power, you'll become overcomers because you are overcomers. Meaning we're victorious because Christ Jesus is victorious. But the word today was wisdom and revelation. So Father, I pray by your spirit that every person that is watching and every person that's attending here, for every word that comes forth, God, I ask, Lord, that you bless us with your wisdom, your spirit of wisdom, and your spirit of revelation and understanding. And as every person that will open up Proverbs, God, that you illuminate where and what we need to know as an individual. That we will grow in wisdom that comes from you through your word, the book of Proverbs. And in that, God, we'll be able to walk out what you called us to walk out. Meaning we're growing. Our roots are growing. We're being built upon you, Christ Jesus. We'll be knitted in love. We'll operate and move together as your body. One will serve. One will give. One will prophesy. One will teach. One will counsel. One will do all the good deeds of what you've distributed by your spirit. So, Father, give the gathering of the Inland Valley in the city of Fontana your wisdom. Give us understanding as we go forth for these 31 days to read the book, your book, Lord, of wisdom. Give us boldness and courageousness, God. Meaning we can be courageous and say, you know what? There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus, but I recognize where I'm being disciplined. And that's okay, God, because that's what you do, because that's what it says in Hebrews, that you're a good father and you discipline those that you love. Because if you didn't discipline me, I would not be your child. So thank you for your discipline. But not only in discipline, God, but the encouragement of your word that transforms and renews our mind. That you will give us wisdom through your Proverbs, brother. So, Lord, honor this day. Bless your children. Bless the city of Fontana. Call those into repentance that you've called. Choose those that you choose for your salvation power. Use us, God, as representatives of who you are. Teach us your ways, O oh Lord. And create on us a clean heart. And I pray all this 
in the name of Jesus. And the church says, Amen. 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 God bless you. We love you. We pray you have a wonderful day today. And see you January 8th uh, back at the Senior Center. And don't forget, read your Proverbs a day. And don't forget to post something that the Lord spoke to you through. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Have a good evening. Amen. 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 Amen.